All right, what's up, everybody? Willis here, back once again with another Throne and Liberty video. Now, I've got a very cool video for you guys today. We're going to be going over probably the best tank build in the game. Tanking in Throne and Liberty is honestly extremely rewarding. As you know, getting into dungeons is a pain. When you're a tank, it's just you can do whatever you want. Real quick, guys, we're still doing the giveaway for the gold edition of the game. Uh, like the video, leave a comment, and make sure you're subscribed with bell notifications turned on. As well, the first 50 comments on this video to leave a yellow heart will be entered into a bonus giveaway we're doing today over on the Discord. Anyway, enough yapping, let's jump into it. So I've recently just did like a little, I want to say like a side build. You can't really switch weapons in Throne and Liberty. Um, it's extremely difficult and it requires a lot of resources. So basically what I have done is... I basically just got a sword and a shield, the heroic one. Now, obviously, this isn't the best weapon you need to be using, and I'll show you guys what weapons and armor you actually need to be using. So for the sake of this video, ignore all of my armor, ignore my weapons, and I'll basically be telling you the, the correct stuff you need to go farm. So starting off, you guys probably want to see the skills first. I feel like I did a very horrible job uh, showing my skills in the last video, so we're going to do a better job this video. So... Obviously, we're using Greatsword and we're using Sword and Shield. Um, this is probably the best tanking weapon combo in the game. I have seen people use like Dagger and Shield, um, like Wand and Shield. Honestly, just go with Greatsword and go with Sword. It's the best. Trust me. So the skills we're going to be using, starting off, you can honestly organize them wherever you want. Um, we've got Piercing Strike. This is probably one of your most spammable abilities. What this will basically do, it will shoot a cone in front of you, and this will weaken enemies. What it also does is, as well, when you put the specialization on it, it will draw aggro. And this is what that looks like, as you can see. It does like this big wave, it shoots out a wave, and this is going to pull aggro. Next up, we have Cruel Smite. This is basically a normal spammable ability once again it does three strikes it will also pull aggro as well which is extremely important when you're a tank you need your abilities to be pulling aggro because that's your job in the dungeons and in pvp as well next up we have will breaker will breaker is a 360 degrees weaken ability which is extremely good when you're surrounded by enemies it will basically do a 360 sweep and hit everyone around you and weakening everybody really good for aoe clearing as well Next, we've got Provoking Roar. What this will do, it will make a short, little short distance roar. You can see the range here. And you'll basically roar, and it will pull all of the enemies around you. Once again, this is another tanking ability which you need to spam to keep the aggro on you. If you don't know what aggro is, it's basically you pulling the attention of the monsters or maybe even the boss to attack you. That's your job as a tank. Next up, we've got Counter Barrier. This will basically increase your block chance by 13%. It also deals a bit of damage as well. It's a, it's a good survival skill, which you can just spam now and again. It's on a very short cooldown as well. Very good for just staying alive. Next, we've got Stalwart Bastion. This will give you damage reduction for 9 seconds and party members within a 10 meter radius. So you press this, it'll basically buff everybody in the area. Extremely powerful. Then, probably one of your most powerful abilities for saving healers. Saving maybe a DPS who has pulled aggro by accident. It's called Devoted Sanctuary, and what this will do, it will take 40% of the damage intended for a party member within a 15 meter radius for 6 seconds. Take only 100% of the damage dealt, and you press this, and it'll basically save someone's life. Um, this is really good in the uh, co-op dungeon Temple of Slaughter. If you guys have fought this boss before, what will happen is he will target one player and shoot fireballs at this player. You can activate this, and you can pretty much sponge most of the damage. Or maybe you can even stop your healer from being one shot on a white mechanic. Either way, it's extremely good. Next, we've got Chain Hook, probably the bread and butter of the tanks. Basically, just pull an enemy towards you. Then we've got Strategic Rust, which is really good. It's basically like a charge attack. It will also push enemies, so you can push them into like walls. And you can also push them off, like let's say, like a cliff. So you can group up a bunch of enemies and basically just push them off the edge of, let's say, like a, a walkway. Next, we've got Da Vinci's Courage, one of the best uh, greatsword abilities. Increases your health by a ton. It will also give everybody attack speed, and it will also heal everybody in a small area. Very good. Then we've got Gaia's Crash, which basically slams your greatsword down. This will give you attack speed as well, so you want to basically use this and then follow up with your other attacks. 
And then your main damage dealing ability, which is Guillotine Blade. The longer you hold it, the more damage you'll do. So once again, you want to use Gaia's Crash before you actually use Guillotine Blade because Gaia's Crash gives you attack speed. The more attack speed you have, the faster it actually takes to charge to max. Quick tip for you. So yeah, I guess here's a quick rotation you guys can follow. So obviously you want to start off with your buffs, which is Da Vinci's Resolve, into the Piercing Strike, which will pull the aggro. Then you want to, I guess, use maybe Devoted Sanctuary if you want. Uh, Provoking War to pull aggro. Then you want to go into like maybe a Will Breaker. Then you want to do like Gaia's Crash into a Guillotine Blade. And by the time you've done all this, you should be able to rinse and repeat with another piercing strike to pull the aggro into a cruel smite. And then everything else after that is basically used whenever you want. If you're in trouble, Stalwart Bastion for survival. And that's pretty much it. It is super easy to tank in this game, guys. I will not lie. I have just been doing dungeons with a level <laughs> zero, uh, I guess, sword and shield. Like, my original combat power was like 2300, and I only went down to 2000 by switching this out. Now, I should probably optimize my gear and stuff like that using the correct gear, which is what we're going to go into now. But finding groups is just way easier when you're a tank and you just learn the mechanics of the bosses. Trust me, if you're just a DPS and you're just sitting there for like 20 minutes trying to find a dungeon, this is the best thing you can do. Just find a sword and shield and just do the heavy lifting. It's honestly not that hard. Trust me. Now, for your main sword and shield, you either want Karnix's Netherblade or you want Nurma's Sword of Echoes. Connex's Neverblade will give you more health, and Numa's Sword of Echo will give you more block chance, which obviously both of them will keep you alive for longer. So the greatsword you actually want to use is the Adentus Gargantuan Greatsword. And this is actually dropped from Adentus, which isn't really on main servers yet. So honestly, if you don't have this, just use any other greatsword until you can get this one. Next, you want Helm of the Field General for your helmet. This comes from the Chernobog Open World Boss. And then for your trousers, you want the Shock Commander Greaves. This comes from Kawazan. For your gloves, you want the Gauntlets of the Fields General. This comes from Aridus. And then you want the Belt of Bloodlust, which also comes from Aridus too. For your rings, obviously you want the Amber Dimensional Band. This comes from the Recipe Precious Epic uh, Accessory Chest, which basically requires you to get uh, tokens from the dungeon. So this is a good way to go out and learn the dungeons. You need to craft uh, this thing called the Dimensional Essence Salvation, and then you can use this to unlock the accessory chest. This is done from the accessory vendor, so make sure you go and do that. It does take a while, but you need to go out and just do dungeons anyway, so make sure you are gathering the tokens from each one. And then for the cape, it's from the Cave of Destruction, and the, I guess, the Bracer, the Ring, the Ancient Saradama Bracers, which is actually from the Tyrant Isle. But yeah, that's basically all of the armor and stuff you need obviously it's going to vary depending on what you want to do now there probably will be different skills and stuff for the pvp version but i guess this is more of a pve oriented build until you can do that final transition to pvp the majority of players will probably be pve so what do i recommend you do me personally i will be doing a full pvp build on all of my stuff so i will eventually transition to pvp but now i'm just kind of using what items i get because most of the stuff i need is from bosses that aren't even in the game yet. So yeah, you kind of just got to pick your poison and just take your time. As for the masteries, this is what you want to do for your great sword or your sword and shield, actually. You want to do halfway through the middle tree, um, the full tree up here, as you can see, and not the very end one, and then one on the end by here. So just copy this one for the sword and shield. And then for the great sword, you want to do this one exactly. So six at the top, one in the middle, and then the full bottom row, as you can see copy that as for your passive skills i almost completely forgot this obviously you want to use robust constitution this gives you a ton of health um you want to use vital force this will just make you hit harder do more stun chances the more health you have then you want indomitable armor taking damage grants a 25 percent chance to increase magic melee and ranged defenses then you've got resilient mind evading a attack basically gives you more defense and it also restores health as well then you want to use spectrum of agony Next up, you want to use the Aegis Shield. Then you want to use Impenetrable. And then finishing up with Victor's Morale. Now, what I would focus on upgrading first would probably be Robust Constitution. It just gives you more health and probably Vital Force as well. These will be your passives that you're going to be using. As for the block, you obviously want to use the Sword and Shield block. 
probably one of the best blocks in the game, obviously, because it's on the sword and shield. I almost forgot one thing as well, which was the actual skill specializations. So here you go. Make sure to come and copy these. Just keep in mind as well, stuff like Willbreaker, you're probably thinking, oh, I don't have this ability. A lot of the specializations that you put on will change the picture here. So this is what Willbreaker actually looks like. But when you put on the specialization, it changes the picture. So for any reason, you don't know what any of these skills are, just match it with mine and they'll just be in the same place. So obviously stuff like Guillotine Blade, when you change this, it changes the picture. A lot of people were confused in my last videos. They were basically saying, hey, Willis, I don't have uh, like a frost ability like you. What should I do? Which is basically just Gaia's Crash, but with the frost perk on it. Uh, yeah, so this is great sword. Make sure to copy it. And this is sword and shield. Make sure to copy every single one. As long as you are level 50, you will have enough specialization points to do every single one. Most of these basically just give you like aggro increases which is what you need for tanking. So anything that just increases the amount of aggro that you draw is stuff that you want to use. So Cruel Smite, Piercing Strike, you know, all the basic spammable abilities. I almost forgot. I can't believe I'm so silly. Um, so for your, your stats, your main stats, you want to focus on Strength, then Dexterity, Wisdom, and Perception. Now, obviously, Strength is important because it gives you weapon damage, but it also increases your max health and defense. So obviously, Strength is the main thing you want to go for and then Dexterity, and then Wisdom and Perception will come later as you get more gear. Early game, obviously, you want to reach 30 Strength and 30 Dexterity, and then the end goal is basically 60 Strength to get the extra 900 health you get from hitting 60 Strength. 40 Perception will actually give you a 5% increased buff duration, and then your last goal is to reach 30 Dexterity, and then put points into Wisdom, I guess, if you want Mana Regen, but that's up to you. Anyway, hopefully you guys just enjoyed this quick video of the, I guess, the best tanking build. Be sure to come and join my Discord, guys. We've got an awesome Throne and Liberty channel we've just made. As well, we do have a guild open on the EU server Conquest. So if anybody loves PvP, PvE wants to come and join. I think we have around 20 spots left on our second guild. It's all maintained by an awesome team as well. We've got pretty much daily PvP, daily PvE, and we've got our own Discord chat as well where we organize stuff. It's really fun. So I recommend you come and join the Discord. Send me a message on Discord if you are interested in joining. The only requirement is obviously you're on EU and you're level 50. That's it. And you can join. Um, other than that, yeah, like the video, leave a comment. We're giving away the gold edition of the game. Yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.